There lives in Tibet a nation of oppressed people, in the process of being destroyed, secretly and silently, over the past 45 years. It is a faraway and mysterious country, inaccessible for a long time and often forbidden. It is an immense plateau at an altitude of 4,000 meters, surrounded by deserts and the highest mountains in the world. Among the first images of Tibet were these, filmed in 1938 by a scientific mission undertaken by Germany's Third Reich. The Schaffer mission was made up of meticulous and determined scientists. To understand what they were seeing, everything had to be measured. Everything. The images reveal the innocent and easygoing happiness of an isolated society, poor, dynamic, and violence-free. The religion was Buddhism, and the people lived in a feudal structure, ruled by monks and several lords. The holy city, Lhasa, is in the center of Tibet, along the river of happiness along with the Patala Palace. Welcome to all strangers. Several days after his arrival, Schaffer filmed the New Year's celebrations. The oracle was carried by the monks, all in a trance. The oracle was consulted for the New Year. The ceremony attracted thousands of pilgrims from all over Tibet and from China, Mongolia, Nepal and India. The images would have viewers believe that nothing had changed since the time of Genghis Khan. Neither the gold and ceremonial costumes, nor the quiet pride of the lords. It could have been Genghis Khan's court. The country was ruled at that point by a regent. The 13th Dalai Lama had been dead five years after 50 years of rule. At the top of a feudal hierarchy, he held total power. He was always the reincarnation of the previous Dalai Lama. <laughs> 
When he died, in turn he would be reincarnated in a young boy, whom the monks would seek out from village to village, and would recognize by secret signs. In 1940, an Englishman filmed in color the arrival of the royal court and the royal golden chair in which the 14th Dalai Lama was carried. He had been discovered by the monks three years earlier among the children of a poor farmer's family. This was his first time in the Lhasa Palace. It was the first visit by a foreign dignitary, Sir Basil Gould, the ambassador of Great Britain. Barely visible in the shadows, surrounded by advisors, was the 14th Dalai Lama, a five-year-old child. Could he imagine what the future would bring? With the ambassador and the court came the official presence. A pedal car for his brother. There was all the gold and the colors of the attire of the aristocrats and Lady Gould. Since the beginning of the century, Great Britain, the major imperial power, had kept a close watch on Tibet's independence, necessary to maintain regional political balance. There were two major regions, northern inner Tibet, under Chinese influence, and southern and central outer Tibet, autonomous and independent. Six million Tibetans lived in a country five times as large as France. They were surrounded to the north and the south by two-thirds of the world's population. They had been invaded several times by regional powers who sought to dominate them. In spite of this, they managed to keep their cultural independence and their autonomy. In Europe and in China, war had broken out, but here that was all far away. Austrian mountain climber Heinrich Harrer crossed the Himalayas and reached forbidden Tibet. He became a friend of the Dalai Lama. These were images he took. Between the winter and summer palaces, the inner circle of the Dalai Lama carried on. In his golden chair, he knew nothing of the outside world. The war changed the world's balance. In India, Gandhi launched the movement for independence. The British Empire was coming apart. In 1947, the Viceroy of India told Tibetans that Great Britain could no longer guarantee accords signed in the past. <laughs> 
One last time, Harar filmed the New Year's celebration. once again carried by the monks. He made his predictions. Sending the year gone by into the past. In 1949, the Long March in China ended. The People's Republic came into being. Very quickly, Mao urged Tibetans to free themselves of feudal rule. Harar had filmed the last rituals of a condemned society. young Dalai Lama was increasingly facing threats. Warned of the danger, the monks decided to crown him two years before the normal age. He had just turned 15. As the crowning ceremony was taking place in Lhasa, history was on the move. Three Chinese armies under the orders of Marishal Lin Piao crossed the Yangtze Kiang and rolled towards Tibet to guarantee their security against the plans of the imperialist Americans. The Chinese had never been happy with the accord signed with Great Britain for Tibet's independence. Because they had invaded it in the past, China always considered Tibet as a province. Mao waited fewer than 100 days to make his intentions known, announcing, the Tibetan people will return to the family of the mother country. An expedition was launched. To open the roads, build bridges, and cross passes at an altitude of more than 5,000 meters. The troops came from all over. Ganzi, 
，每人背着八十多斤的东西，越过高山峻岭，穿过原始森林。It took almost a year to get to the border of autonomous Tibet. The fighting lasted only a short time. Outnumbered by ten to one, poorly armed with no battle plans, the tiny Tibetan army was crushed. The pretext for the intervention was the presence of a foreign army, six advisers, and a radio man, Robert Ford. Just before being captured, he was able to warn Lhasa of the imminent danger. The decision was taken to send the Dalai Lama away to safety, somewhere near the Indian border. With him went a part of the royal treasure, containers of gold powder. This had already been done during other invasions in the past. From the north and the east, the Chinese troops converged on Lhasa. Two hundred kilometers from there lay the city of Shigatse, Tibet's second city, the home of the Panchen Lamas. The Panchen Lama was also the reincarnation of his predecessor, and was number two in the hierarchy of political and religious power. He was fourteen years old, and was totally dependent on the opinions and the plotting of his advisers. He became the point man of the communists. He wrote Mao, "Tibet is with you." Nine months later, a unit of the People's Army took up residence in Lhasa. There were twenty thousand soldiers for fifty thousand Tibetans. The seizures, punishments, and famine began. Nothing would ever be the same. Propaganda showed off Tibet as free and Chinese, a nation among others in the large family of Greater China. The first meeting between a political official and the Dalai Lama, who had returned to Lhasa. Was filmed for propaganda purposes. In Beijing, emissaries of the Tibetan government signed under pressure a 17-point accord that the Chinese then ratified with a false Dalai Lama stamp. The accord called for the maintaining of Tibetan cultural and religious identity. Independence was gone, but the authority of the Dalai Lama was carried on.
The Panchen Lama discovered the new rituals. The unending speeches and propaganda. And all the constraints that came with collaboration. War was on in Korea. Tibet was not a hot spot in the Cold War. Abandoned by India and the Western powers, Tibet did the best it could with the so-called peaceful liberation by China. The illusion did not last long. Two years later, the Chinese forced the Dalai Lama to send away his main ministers and advisors. He assumed sole responsibility for the government, by now an isolated body, along with the Panchen Lama and the Chinese political officers. The Panchen Lama came to Lhasa for the first time and finally met the Dalai Lama. They were 17 and 16 years old. Invited by Mao to visit Beijing, the Dalai Lama left Lhasa on July 11, 1954, though the people begged him not to go. They were afraid he would never be able to return. It was the first time he had left Tibet. The voyage was a long one, more than 5,000 kilometers. Arrival at the Chinese border. The Dalai Lama took the train for the first time. The delegation visited the forbidden city. The Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama met with Mao several times and celebrated their 20th birthdays in Beijing. In spite of the polite appearances, pressure was being put on the guests. pressure about the gifts of communism. Mao personally told the Dalai Lama about the reform measures to rule over Tibet, including a preparatory committee. Yang Mao 
And there were deputies in the National Assembly. The Dalai Lama said his goodbyes to the Panchen Lama and left Beijing after spending almost one year there. With no news, Lhasa thought he had been taken prisoner. But his return in a jeep with no ceremony showed off the real reason for the journey, to turn the God King into an ordinary Chinese civil servant. The Panchen Lama, wearing a suit, was kept like a hostage in Beijing. Then came the next stage of the Chinese plan, the conquest of the House of Riches of the West, the Chinese name for Tibet. First came strategic routes up to the border with India, 2,500 kilometers of new roads. It was rough going to bring the modern world to this difficult environment. The walls of the Tibetan fortress were opened ending the protection offered by the highest mountains in the world. The east was red, and the sun was rising. Mao brought electricity. Books were taken from the monasteries and burned, erasing the past. It was a direct road between Beijing and Lhasa. In 1956, the Dalai Lama went to India invited by Nehru to celebrate the birthday of Buddha. The Buddha experienced his awakening under this tree. It was a return to the roots of Buddhism. The Panchen Lama also made the voyage. It was a return to Buddhist roots, but also a diplomatic voyage for the Dalai Lama, who asked for help against the Chinese invasion, and was refused. While they were visiting the main Buddhist sites in India, far away in Tibet, the revolt had already begun in the provinces where Chinese oppression was heaviest. The voyage was about to end for the Dalai Lama and the Panchen Lama. How could they know their paths were about to separate forever? 
Chama. 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 Pa. Pa. Gawa. Gawa. Pa. Pa. Gawa. 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 Ma. Ma. Chama. Chama. This was the Chinese method. It began in school and continued on in the camps. The huge parcels of land belonging to the monasteries were grouped together and redistributed. Growing techniques were changed and then the temples and monasteries were destroyed. Religious practices were made illegal. Arrests and purges became increasingly frequent. Traditional agriculture was ruined. And the first famines began. Over three years, rioting against oppression had increased in the central provinces. The resistance was becoming organized. The large remaining monasteries were the last oases against colonization. The Dalai Lama was 22 years old. He took his last exams before being awarded his full religious attribution. He developed the same gesture with his hands to emphasize questions and answers. From monastery to monastery. Dalai Lama means ocean of wisdom. The last illusion that Tibet could live freely with its culture and beliefs was shattered. With attacks and ambushes, the revolt continued. The resistance had spread all the way to Lhasa. The Chinese army struck back, but the Dalai Lama condemned violence of any kind in his messages. He was warned it was time to leave. During the night of March 17th, he put on a Chinese uniform and with almost no escorts, he left the palace. Destination unknown. The inhabitants of Lhasa rose up. 20,000 civilians against 40,000 Chinese soldiers. The rioting lasted three days. It was put down violently and rapidly. Freedom was gone. The resistance had ended. Propaganda footage was shot to discredit the monks. There were thousands of deaths, more than 10,000 in Lhasa and at least 100,000 throughout the country. Everything was destroyed. The Dalai Lama was hiding in the mountains. 
The Chinese were looking for him, saying he had been kidnapped by counter-revolutionaries. The hiding out lasted three weeks. By the end of March, he was in India. The Tibetan government was no more. Lhasa was under siege and silent. Welcomed by Nehru, the Dalai Lama began life in exile. He has lived in exile ever since. The Dalai Lama desperately tried to tell the whole world about the genocide and repression taking place in Tibet. The Panchen Lama was still a hostage and the official Tibetan leader named by the Chinese. He renounced collaborating with the Chinese several times and five years later offered his public support to the Dalai Lama. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison and then house arrest in Beijing. Tibet was completely annexed. The Chinese army continued south to straighten out its borders with India, which was now directly threatened. The future of the world was being played out elsewhere, in Berlin and in Cuba. The Cold War had little to do with India and Tibet. Nehru faced a war and was dealt a sharp defeat. The results were clear. The eastern provinces became a part of China. Only the former autonomous region kept the name Tibet, a means of isolating it. Then came the continuation of the Chinese method. But the Chinese propaganda did not show the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people of exhaustion and hunger. There was terror, torture, and rape. Monks were crucified, burned, and buried alive. Children were forced to kill their own parents. People fled across the mountains to escape the horror and the famine ravaging the country for more than three years.
more than 100,000 people were able to join the Dalai Lama in India. At Dharamsala, he established a Tibetan government in exile and on March 10, 1963, announced a democratic constitution. The violence and acts of resistance continued. They were known as the Special Border Force, a Tibetan underground commando unit trained and maintained by the CIA. Crossing a mountain pass, there was a moment for prayers. There was fighting and ambushes, typical partisan guerrilla warfare. For the Dalai Lama, this was not the right path. His message broadcast on the radio reminded Tibetans that violence was contrary to Buddhist principles and that he opposed it. I made clear that if j'ai été très clair dès le début, si les Tibétains choisissent la violence pour résister aux Chinois, alors je me retire de mes responsabilités. During this time, the Red Guards reached Tibet. The last monasteries and temples still standing were razed to the ground. The Cultural Revolution continued another ten years. It resulted in one million deaths, one out of every six Tibetan. These were the ruins of the monastery of Ganden, one of the largest, home to thousands of monks. An entire society and its culture were destroyed. In 1972, the Cold War was evolving. U.S. President Richard Nixon visited Beijing. China had become a member of the United Nations a year earlier. The uprisings, repression and famine continued in Tibet. But the borders had to be opened slightly. The bamboo curtain had to be opened for a glimpse. For the first time, the Chinese authorized a visit by a group of Tibetans in exile. They had been waiting so long for this moment. The Dalai Lama's family was there. People came from faraway regions to see them, to touch them. <laughs> 
Nothing had been forgotten. Never believe the Chinese, never. Tell the Dalai Lama not to come back. These images scared the Chinese. They learned that 20 years of exile, repression and re-education had not lessened the prestige of the Dalai Lama. Then came the next step in the Chinese method. After the genocide came massive colonization. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese settlers invaded Tibet. In 1980, Lhasa became a Chinese city. Ten years later, without counting the occupation troops, ethnic Chinese inhabitants outnumbered the Tibetans, who had become a minority in their own city. Checks and balances worldwide continued to evolve. Human rights had become a Cold War issue. Addressing the U.S. Senate, the Dalai Lama proposed transforming Tibet into a peace zone and called for negotiations with China. Posters appeared on the walls of Lhasa copying the favorable response of the U.S. Senate. Very little was needed to awaken the hope and courage needed to display the Tibetan flag for the first time in 30 years. Three days later, thousands of people demonstrated for independence on the departure of Chinese troops. The gatherings were repeated six months and then a year later. Chinese security forces went into action. <laughs> 
In Dharamsala, people held a silent demonstration. For the human rights as the very foundation for a true, just and lasting peace. And accordingly, I now call upon... In 1989, the Dalai Lama received the Nobel Peace Prize in Oslo. Will you please enter the podium and receive the Nobel Peace Prize for 1989 with a gold medal and the diploma. In Beijing, the Panchen Lama died. <coughs> First, let me say a few words in Tibetan. The Berlin Wall came down and McDonald's was in Moscow. In spite of the fact that Holiday Inn opened a hotel in Lhasa, there was no freedom for Tibetans. Their world was ruled by the Chinese. Overwhelmed by millions of Chinese settlers, the remnants of Tibetan society, hanging between life and death, are waiting to be saved.